Wakey, wakey. Saskatoon Flying J. We gotta hurry though, because if we, if everything goes okay and according to plan here, we're gonna get unloaded today yet. And we're not gonna have to wait until tomorrow. And then we can get turned around, reloaded and, excuse me, Karen, no swearing on this channel. Karen, you behave. Just gonna get ourselves turned around in the lot here real quick. It's kind of rush hour here in the morning. Everybody wants to get going at the same time. Got to replace this electrical tape on here. I got to replace this thing actually. This thing's a piece of plastic and it's cracked and it rattles on the highway. I'm gonna do a quick little loop around the Flying J. I can turn around here. And we will be off to the races. These parking lots fill up so fast. Rightfully, see this guy's not even in a parking spot. He's right in the driveway, but sometimes you're out of hours and you just don't have a choice Got to cut him some slack a kerfuffle here now isn't it if no one's gonna go I'm gonna go all right one of us has got to go use my CB for the first time no response It doesn't help that this is the only driveway into the parking lot. It's an entry and an exit. Even though it just says entry on the sign there. The exit used to be on the other side, but for some reason they closed it off and now everything's sort of tied up here. in Alberta about five and a half hours of driving good solid highway driving 556 kilometers
before. made it and we got the freight off the trailer all 60,000 pounds of it some of it's over there some of it's over there some of it's over there I have a reload now I'm picking up a load in Calgary tomorrow morning it's gonna bring me back to Winnipeg so tomorrow morning's Thursday I get loaded first thing in the morning I'll be home Friday afternoon sometime or I'll be back in Winnipeg I'll probably have to deliver the load on Friday it only takes a little over a day to get home from Calgary or get to Winnipeg from Calgary. Can't quite make it and it's about a 14 hour drive and you can only do 13 in a single day on our hours of service here in Canada. So, feels good, we got this job done. I'm gonna go do some paperwork. Uh, I keep everything in records so that I remember what I did uh, so that I, when I get my pay stub that uh, I remember <laughs> that I get paid for what I did. <laughs> I keep track of everything. Truck is running really good. And uh, I really like it. It's been, it's been nice. So this is Atchison, Alberta, just west of Edmonton. Drove about five and a half hours from Saskatoon to get here. And now I'm gonna drive, what, what is it? Three hours down to Calgary, something like that. I'll probably stop at, you guessed it, the Flying J, Calgary. Have a shower, catch up on my videos, watch some YouTube, some Netflix or something, and uh, settle in for the night. Maybe I'll go out for supper. Maybe I'll take myself out on a date. We'll see. We'll see if I deserve it or not at the end of the day. I made it all the way here from Headingley, Manitoba, so from Winnipeg to here, on three-quarter tank of fuel. So that's doing pretty good, considering I had 60,000 pounds behind me that I was pulling. Uh, 95,000 pounds gross, approximately, just under. Uh, my maximum weight is 46,500 kilograms. I'm going to find out an exact weight here for uh, you guys who speak in pounds, 46,500 kg to pounds so my my max gross gvwr is uh 102,514.9 pounds so 202,515 pounds is what i i'm licensed to haul so 95,000 pounds i'm still well under uh, for up here in canada that's a regular triaxle load i know that the weight limits in the u.s limit you to 80,000 pounds on a tandem and you don't see many triaxle loads in the u.s but on most freeways throughout the u.s if you have a triaxle trailer now you can have up to 40,000 pounds on that triaxle uh you, don't, you just don't see it as often though and every state is different there's there's so many different states and they all have different laws and bridge laws and bridge weight laws and uh, but for the states i operate in if i take this trailer into the u.s they would allow me uh, 40,000 on the triaxle, as opposed to 34,000 on just the tandem two axle. So it gives you an extra 6,000 pounds for an axle. So up here with the tandem axle on my trailer, I'm allowed uh, 37,500 pounds on the tandem. And uh, let's see, once again, 24,000 kilograms. You gotta learn how to speak both languages. 52,910 pounds on a triaxle here. So uh, we can haul pretty good weight. And my next load that I'm picking up in Calgary, according to my message here in my computer, is 54,000 pounds. So 6,000 pounds less than this load I pulled here, but it'll be another heavy one. I would definitely be overweight in the United States and overweight on a tandem trailer. But with the Tritum, I should be, uh, I should be well under i think it's going to be some pipes or some kind of freight like that judging by the address that i'm going to looks like they make pipes i don't know we'll find out tomorrow i never quite know what's going on in the trailer i just 
show up and find out. I got everything I need to tie anything down. You just tell me what to pick up, I'll go get it. And I realize that a lot of you don't drive trucks, so you might not know what I'm talking about when I use the trucker lingo. Uh, Tridem and triaxle are the same thing. Tandem and dual axle are, are the same thing. So if there's two axles on a trailer, that's a tandem. There's two axles on the back of my truck, that's a tandem. If it's three axles, you can call it a triaxle because there's, 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 there's three. Or you can call it a tridem, same thing. So, all the way from Winnipeg to here was about 1,460 kilometers or so. About, let's say, just under 1,500 kilometers. That is uh, 900 and some miles. Let's do the math here real quick. I know that it's just easier if I do it like this. 1,500 kilometers in miles, 932 miles. Pulling 60,000 pounds, let's see how much fuel I burnt. Now remember, we filled up yesterday morning, so this is one day's worth of driving. The price of diesel here is $1.739 per liter. Which is probably about the cheapest you're gonna find in Canada. Okay, so this load that we picked up yesterday morning in Winnipeg and dropped off today, the next day, in Edmonton area, uh, we burned 663 liters of fuel and it cost us $1,153. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. So that would be 175 US gallons and it cost us 898 US dollars to pull uh, 60,000 pounds, uh, 1,500 kilometers or 930 miles. We averaged uh, 46.17 liters per 100 kilometers or 5.1 miles per US gallon. So not the greatest fuel economy, but it was a very heavy load, so it makes sense. So now you know how much it costs to operate these things. How does that make you feel? Now you understand why everything's so expensive at the store? That was just one day. And we're gonna do it all over again because we had a lot of fun doing it. So, uh, with the cost of fuel, everything goes up. Uh, our rates do go up to match uh, fluctuating fuel prices when they come down, they go down, when they go up, they go up. Covers the cost of fuel. Uh, but yeah, if you ever go to the grocery store or go wandering around any other store, or if, if you're uh, you know, building a house and you're wondering, wow, it never used to cost this much to buy a house. Well, now you know part of the reason why. $1,153. One day! What is it this month? It's August. There's 31 days in this month. I'm not gonna burn that much fuel every day. And admittedly, this was about a day and a half because I fueled up yesterday morning and I delivered this midday today. So, well, you do. But whatever, I filled up yesterday and then today. Uh, usually, uh, last month I believe I burnt approximately well, between twelve and $13,000 of fuel. $12,000 CAD to USD. So $12,000 uh, Canadian, 
9,300. So I burnt between 9,000 and 10,000 US dollars of fuel last month, between 12,000 and 13,000 dollars Canadian. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't have a full, full month either. I had a bunch of appointments I had to be home for, right? Well, let's go do some more trucking. You've also got to remember though that fuel isn't my only cost. I also have to maintain this truck. Every six weeks, I have to give it a full service. It costs me $600 tires on this truck are almost ten thousand dollars all the way around at this point uh, might be a little less than that but at this point i wouldn't be surprised about ten thousand dollars all the way around somewhere in there uh, each steer tire alone is almost a thousand dollars nine hundred dollars just for one tire and in the back depends on what kind of tires you get and stuff but uh and then fixing the truck if you got to bring this to a shop it's a minimum like 130 dollars an hour could be higher than that a weekend broken down turns into a $10,000 weekend like that. So not only is there the cost of fuel that we gotta cover, we also gotta cover the maintenance on these trucks because if we can't maintain them, they're not gonna last and nobody's gonna get their freight. We gotta keep them running. And of course, on top of that, all of this expense that I talk about, I have to feed myself and I have to feed my family. I'm gonna pay my mortgage and we're hoping to build a house. We'll see, we'll see, but uh, I at least have to put food on the table, right? And pay the bills, pay the electricity, pay the phone bills. So, uh, you know, sometimes it might look like, oh, big money coming in, big money. And remember, there's big money going out too. It's, uh, it's a fine profit margin, but uh, you, don't, uh, you don't get into trucking to get rich. Let's say you get into it, because you love it. I love trucking. scrapers downtown again. I showered at that Flying J where we fueled in Nisku, Alberta, just south of uh, Edmonton. So I don't have to shower here now. But I haven't been to this truck stop in so long. I used to come here all the time and then they built the, the big Flying J, right? In the southeast corner and I'd always go there. There's the flag. Have arrived at your destination. On the right side, 2525, 32, Avenue. See if I remember, I think this is where we go in. This is the truck entrance. It's been so long. Wow, I'm glad it's still here. It's weird to see it as Esso now because they bought out Husky. All right, let's go find a good parking spot. Like a really good one. Shouldn't have a problem at this time. It's what, 742 right now? Is this a parking spot right there by the scale? Or is that a driveway? I feel like that's a parking spot. Oh. Is there an opening here? Aha! Ha ha ha! Here's our parking spot. Right in here, facing the opposite direction from these guys so that I don't have their uh, refrigeration units right beside my sleeper. There we go. Perfect. 
perfect. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I think that'll be good right there, eh? That's it for today, everybody. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me and tuning in, clicking the video. I appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to start from right here tomorrow. Go pick up our load and head back east. Should be fun. Feels like it's really early still. It's not seven. I got a little bit of time. I might have some time to watch some, some Netflix. We'll see. We'll see. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey everybody, one more thing I wanted to add on to this vlog before I finished it. Look at my window. I have a privacy curtain. I didn't know that. It was in this bag up here. The previous owner told me, I can remember him telling me about it, but I didn't know what he was talking about. I was so excited to get the truck. I was like, oh yeah, 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 cool, cool, cool. I'll figure it out later. Cool, cool, yeah. Came in this little bag here. It's a... Uh... <laughs> I'll put this up here. And it's three pieces. You see, I don't know if I put this on backwards or not. I'm just assuming that the writing that says do not use privacy curtain while vehicle is in motion is supposed to face inside so that, you know, the people sitting inside the truck know. Oh, oh, I, should, I shouldn't drive the truck with these on. Wouldn't help much if the writing was facing out, so I figured that was the inside. So. It works both ways, though. Look at this. It has a little bar in here. It hooks into here, and then it hooks onto there, and this hooks on here. Or I guess, yeah, it's like that. And then Velcro's, these two Velcro together here. Now this is one piece here and it hooks up into these things up here. And the same thing on this side. Look at this. Privacy. Huh. Well, how about that? That's another nice surprise. The, the surprises just keep coming. This truck just keeps giving. Wow, I like it. And I just wanted to add that into the end of my end of my vlog here look at this that's pretty cool i like it